Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to pretty much a follow-up video to the 8350 8GHz overclocking video. Uh, we recently vi revisited the 8350 AMD Vishera CPU and overclocked it to just above 8.1GHz. And many people asked why did I not use the 5GHz 9590 CPU. And the, the 9590 for those who don't really know about this CPU is pretty much the same as 8350 just with the fact that those are running quite a lot hotter with higher vCore but they can run 4.7 GHz base and up to 5 GHz boost whereas the 8350 was only running 4 GHz and 4.2 GHz boost. You can pretty much compare it with a 9900K and a 9900KS, identical CPU, just more voltage and more TDP and higher performance, a little bit more boost. The 9590 with a higher base and higher turbo frequency in theory should be a better bin and therefore can maybe clock higher. That's why we will try if we can push the CPU on all cores higher, maybe all of those cores above 8 GHz and then also rerun Cinebench R15 or R20 with all the cores overclocked. That's something I wanted to do last video but I ran out of LN2, couldn't repeat it. That's why we will try it again today. Uh, overclock the CPU to like 7.5 GHz and see how the power consumption turns out. We will again use the 970 Pro Gaming Aura board from Asus, even though this CPU is officially not listed on the compatibility list you can find online. I think that's due to the high TDP, I think it was 220 or 240 watt and that's exceeding the specs of this board and therefore it was not listed as an official compatible board but I think it should just run fine and especially under LN2 when the PCB is cold anyway it shouldn't be a problem. For the 8350 testing we were using a Seasonic 860 watt PSU today upgraded to 1300 watt. I think we will get nowhere in this direction but the 8350 was exceeding 200 watt under load and I just want to be sure that we will not get any kind of OCPs or shutdowns. That's why we'll just use this 1300 watt Seasonic Prime Platinum PSU. First of all place the CPU inside the mainboard socket. This time we will be a little bit more careful not to bend any pins. Starting off with a quick test because as I said before CPU is officially not compatible with this board but it's physically the same as an 8350. It should work, I don't see why it wouldn't. Just put the CPU cooler on the CPU, a little bit of thermal paste in between. Memory sticks, NVMe drive is in here and yes there are indeed AM3 boards that can use M.2 drives. Let's see if it works. Yeah, everything was working fine, it just posted through, I can already see an image on the screen, working out. Okay, we have a small problem, but that shouldn't be related to the CPU, I think. One of the memory dims seems not to be detected, we have this red LED flashing on the board, and also FF on the debug card. Um, I will just try to reseat the memory dims and maybe clean the socket, maybe that helps. Only using one dim right now. 5D so still doesn't post therefore it could either be that this memory stick has an issue or that it's the slot and that could mean that we have to clean the CPU slot or maybe also the CPU pins. That's why first step is replacing this dim with the other dim. Now using the second dim 4 GB successfully detected. A very good indicator that this CPU is a monster when it comes to power consumption is that after 2 or 3 minutes I already had 50 degrees Celsius container temperature. So pouring some LN2 right now to get it back to like 20 to 30. Make sure the CPU doesn't overheat while debugging. Second dim is back in the main board. Unfortunately still the same error. The only thing that we can do right now is clean CPU socket and clean the memory slots. I already swapped the sticks to be sure that none of them are broken. Both are working individually in the first slot. Now we're just going to clean memory dim slots and also CPU socket, CPU pins that could help. For those kind of problems I can usually recommend the Cleaner 601. You can just spray it right in the socket, right in the memory dim slots and that typically helps just right afterwards and then it should be fine.
After a few more boot issues and multiple cleaning cycles, everything is finally up and running. 9590 is detected and two Corsair DIMMs with 4GB each are also detected successfully. Currently running the first base pretest, just keeping the CPU around the freezing point, about 0 degree Celsius on the CPU container, same temperature should be roughly on the CPU heat spreader. Cinebench R15 is currently running at a speed of 5 GHz across all cores, 1.5 volt V core and the CPU temperature maxed out at about 40 degrees Celsius even though CPU cooler is sitting at 0 degrees Celsius. And the score with 770 points should just be in line. Over the external tool Elmore EVC I set a core voltage of about 1.45 which results in 1.52 reading according to CPU-Z and the temperature on the VRMs peaked out at about yeah, just above 50 degrees Celsius and that's only possible because there is a 120 millimeter fan running at full RPM to keep the VRMs cold otherwise we're easily hitting the 80 to 90 degrees mark with just a single Cinebench R15 run. You can see peak power consumption about 211 watt. Time for one of the frequently asked questions and that's why I always have this additional threaded rod in there and why I use this fan turned around which is then blowing the air towards the top. And the reason for that is that when I pour the liquid nitrogen inside a container you can clearly see that the cold air is always going down. It will hit the main board and surrounding components such as the memory dims and even the VGA. And if I turn around this fan which is currently pointed towards the VRM cooler then this cold air will be moved to the top and we, we have less cold air on the board and therefore also less condensation. I also often read the questions regarding safety measurements when it comes to handling liquid nitrogen. In general, a lot of people are asking why I'm not wearing like a full body protection goggles and gloves. Usually if you're careful enough, you really don't need it. If you pour it on your bare hand, nothing happens. The light and frost effect will protect you simply because the temperature difference between liquid nitrogen and your hand is too big. You have a gas layer building up between both surfaces and this will protect you. Otherwise, liquid nitrogen is not really dangerous. There's a lot of nitrogen in the air anyway. So if we are evaporating one or two liters out of those flasks into the ambient air, it doesn't really change the air as much. Just make sure that it's kind of ventilated inside and then you should be safe. A lot of people are also asking why do we even need or use liquid nitrogen running the same settings as before just at minus 180 degrees Celsius. You can see the load power consumption dropped from about 210 to about 150 watt under load. It doesn't change the speed itself but it's dropping the power consumption significantly and gives us more headroom for voltage and overclocking. We are at the lowest temperature point which is possible with liquid nitrogen. The temperature probe is reading out just about minus 180 degrees Celsius. That's because those sensors are not made for those temperature ranges. Therefore, they are not 100% accurate, but we should be more in the region of about minus 195 to minus 190 degrees Celsius. And now we will try to push this CPU to the maximum speed across all cores, which means we will push the CPU to about 1.9 volt and then step up the core frequency in steps. Okay, that was surprising. Uh, just shut down at 7 GHz. Running a Cinebench R15 test in between multi right now, 1.86 volt, 6.5 GHz. And in this case, 350 watt under load so far. And temperature of the VRM peaks out at over 60 degrees Celsius. But we achieved over 1000 points in R15.
Seems like Core Zero doesn't really like to go above 7 GHz. Unfortunately, the results with this 9590 were not great. The best core, just about 7.1 GHz, worst core, about 6.9 GHz. I usually expect a higher fluctuation between the cores, but on this CPU, very equal and not great, seemed to be like a hard wall on the chip. But it's also something I wanted to show. Just because it's a higher spec, it doesn't mean that it's the better CPU. It's the same with 9900KS and 9900K. It's very likely that you can get a 9900K that is better than an average 9900KS. And it's exactly the same case here, because a lot of people commented on the previous video and saying, hey, why did you not use like a 9370, 9590, the CPU we have on here? It's because the CPU are physically the same, they just have different specs, like higher TDP, higher V-Core, therefore can run a higher voltage, but it doesn't mean that if you run liquid nitrogen, they will be better. One more question a lot of people asked is why did I not use liquid metal in the previous video? And the reason for that is that liquid metal has a temperature dependent thermal conductivity. This means if you cool down the thermal conductivity also drops down and therefore the performance is usually worse than with the conventional thermal paste. And then some people asked why do you not completely submerge the whole mainboard inside LN2 or why do you not put it inside a box where it's colder so you don't have any kind of condensation forming on the board. The reason for that is that a lot of components don't like to be that cold on the mainboard. Especially SSDs and chipsets usually don't like it when they're below like minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius. Some boards even have issues if the VR VRM controller or the VRM itself is getting way too cold. I remember on C77 boards from Asus, we had some trouble that if they were getting too cold, the MOSFETs, then some of them even short circuited. That was really bad, but that's something you usually don't experience. But the reason for that is that not every component likes to be as cold as the CPU. And if you decide to run much longer than what we just did today, I think it was running about four hours. If you want to run like 10, 12 hours, then usually it's recommended to put a lot more insulation stuff around your main board, like foam and towels and stuff. So you can draw, uh, catch any kind of condensation drops and avoid more ice. So much about this video, thanks for joining in and see you next time. Thank you.